Yes, yeah, so we're back on the Sports Mike Zone for this Friday, and we are picking up now where we left off with the Thursday show in that in exclusive interview with the husband of double double Olympic champion Elaine Thompson Hira, as he continues to explain the reason behind the separation with interim coach Shaniki Osborne. On Thursday, he disclosed that Osborne was requesting a compensation package of close to one million US dollars. Let's continue that conversation. Where did the conversation mm. go from there when um, Miss Osborne's, well, agent, manager, the mediator, Damia Russell, um, requested that figure? Well, I mean, at this point, when I was just, I was just trying to confirm that um, we were on the same page, and I was seeing what I was seeing. Um, so, I, I, like I said, I asked him if he do know what that is. Um, the person, the fifteen percent, did have what figure? He said he knows exactly what he said. So at that point, I, I was like, I don't think I can have this conversation with you right now, because it we are night and day apart in terms of um, getting to an agreement. I then um, called Elaine and tried to explain to her what what happened. Um, so they. We're engaged in a phone conversation after that. That is Elaine and um, Mr. Russell. Um, obviously, that didn't that didn't go well. Um, and then I texted Miss Osborne. I called her first. Didn't get her. I text. Um, didn't get her till maybe in the evening. Maybe a couple hours. Not a couple. About ten or so hours later. And I was explaining to her. Um, like I was really coming in there and I was explaining to her that um, I admire her as a coach and um, the person that she puts in charge of negotiating her um, finances doesn't seem to know much about track and field. And this wouldn't be good for her going forward. But then she started to explain to me why and she trusted him and such and such and such. So at that point, we were still in training, um, so this was like what the weekend, the Sunday, yeah. And then we, we we went to another week of training, almost a week. Um, Thursday night, the Thursday was our anniversary, and then we went um, away from home and came back in the evening, and then I trained in the Friday morning. Yeah. So before training, I normally go and pick up some of the guys um, close by, and then Elaine would drive by herself. And on my way out, Elaine called and said she got a text that like was like maybe one at one a.m. So obviously wouldn't have seen it until in the morning that she had withdrawn her service because we couldn't come to an agreement, and so that was the situation. So I me I immediately went into um, solution mode, trying to Be get to the next best option. Yeah, before you uh, before you get before you get there, Duran, because. Looking at a story from Sportsmax.tv that came out yes. on Thursday, the, the headline, um, lie, Lies, sorry, um, suggesting mm -hmm. that, um, well, Miss Osborne suggesting that there was still room for negotiation. But you are suggesting here that she slammed the door shut. Is, 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 that, what you're, is that what you got from that well, message that much came because, at 1 okay. a.m.? As a coach, if you if you care any about an athlete, you would understand that the, the athlete cannot miss days in training, right? Um, you basically said that you are withdrawing your service until. So basically, um, I don't want to start a system of her in one system. This is a year for her to do something that is unthinkable. And you, you don't see this in, in, in how many lifetimes? This is the first time in forever, ever, right? Only the great you saying I've done something like this on the, on the men's side. So to be even mentioned to do something, the, for a possibility of doing something like that, I think I want to, she, she has to have the best possible opportunity to do it within the situation. So at this point, 
if everything at this point, I am now seeing that everything is really about money. They are not saying it, but it really is about that. Because she, I explained that we cannot, we basically cannot, um, we cannot put out a figure because that would be a breach. And nobody, no contract, you, you have an, a person outside of who was at the table, you show them that. That not, that's not in this world of um, track and field. You know, so we just cannot um, do that. So basically, we're trying to work around that. Um, they, based, based on my understanding, it seemed like they had a figure that they were working with. And they even brought different information in terms of where they got their information from. And it became uncomfortable. Yeah. The situation you, became uncomfortable. How do you suspect, Darren, that they would have come up with what seems like such a ridiculous figure, which is way outside what is market value for um, coaches' services, especially given um, in situations like this specifically? Well, I, I have no idea, but sometimes the media plays a, a role, because you hear, you hear talks about this mega contract and this mega deals, and uh, it says a whole bunch of assumptions, and you know, so I guess, and then, like I said, they were in dialogue with, with other parties that they mentioned, you know, so, like I said, at that point, it became uncomfortable. So you knew that, you basically, you know, that other persons were were being brought into the situation. And it is a private situation, you know. And so basically, and the fact that you just basically pull the plug on an athlete, that definitely there you have scarred the, 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 the relationship there in a way that, you know, you have to have a situation where everybody gets along and it is smooth sailing. So that after that, then I didn't see where we could go and mend it. Yeah. So I basically, you know, moved forward. I had to move forward quickly. Like I said, I wanted to give you the best um, possible chance in terms of you have to have, you see the times that are out there and you see what the possibilities are. You see what you're up against. So basically, you have to get um, close to your best or better than your best. So. Yeah, you have to have a better situation. So I basically moved quickly. So I was kind of surprised when all this came out because I didn't thought that was, you know, it, it, it's just that it didn't work out, it didn't work out, you know. And it, 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 it was a situation where it was almost like a stick-up that didn't work, you know what I mean? So it, that just so it, that's the way it came out. But then today I saw this names or a name just there, there, there. And it's, it's, it's a lot of negative um, vibe. And it is, so you look past stuff. You can look past it, because I mean, I look past it. But at the end of the day, like people may just say stuff loosely, and you don't really understand the impact that it has on um, a person, especially for athletes. You know, it is, it is damaging. Um, it is damaging it's when you want to compete at the highest level. Um, every little, small, minute thing, it becomes a factor. You have to try to be, try to be um, as strong as possible. But at the same time, it is just consistent. The same thing happens over and over in the media, and then it just seems like people form their own opinion. And much, most of the, 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 the stuff that comes out, are, are not true, are just yeah, misinformation. Yeah, after the break, which is coming up now, we will conclude uh, our three-part exclusive interview conducted Thursday evening with Darren Hira, husband of double double Olympic champion Elaine Thompson Hira. Back in a moment.
This is the Friday edition of the Sportsmax Zone, and we are continuing with our exclusive interview conducted on Thursday evening with uh, the husband of uh, double double Olympic sprint champion Elaine Thompson Hira. Darren Hira has been talking to us about um, the highly publicized story that led to the separation between Thompson Hira and her coach Shaniki Osborne who had taken over the coaching duties with her last uh, summer and here is part three now of this interview with Darren Hira. One of the things Darren is that and I think Shaniki Osborne said it as well that she thought mm -hmm. she had an agreement with Elaine Thompson Hira and it was your intervention that essentially changed Elaine's mind. That Elaine no, had agreed I mean, to the 15% that she was asking for. Elaine could have, no, I mean, just by agreeing to 15%, to, to you would have breached. And then, remember, Elaine's contracts were already there. Um, she would have achieved what she did without Shaniki. But, but so why would Shanika think the, that Elaine had agreed to this, though? I mean, I, I, I have no idea because at the end of the... I was, at, I was at the house when they went in the office and met. I was there. Um, so when at the end of the meeting, we were still trying to figure out what would be a, a comfortable figure to propose. Yeah, so I, I don't understand why she would, she would have thought that Elaine was agreeing. So, and basically, I mean, Elaine makes her own decision. Basically, if normally she's not brought into situations like this, she she instructs what she's comfortable with, and I try to get it as close as possible to what it is, if not that. Um, so, but in her role, um, she basically has to just train, try to stay healthy and try to, you know, try to perform as best as possible. So um, there's no athlete that is their own yeah. management. So she's involved in whatever happens because um, it is, she is the, the, the leader of the ship in that sense, basically. So whatever she's comfortable with would have happened, but that was just impossible. Yeah, and, and you know, yeah, that was the Darren, there are those who would say that given the way Elaine ended the season after Coach Osborne um, came into the picture that, you know, you should have done everything within your power to ensure that this relationship worked. When you sit back and you look at it, do you believe that you did everything you could have done to make this relationship work? Well, okay, so... I did. Listen, I facilitated everything. We, we, we have every possible piece of equipment you could think of, highly invested in stuff like that. Um, in terms of medical stuff, she gets the best. Uh, Ms. Asburn doesn't know nothing about um, the, the, the medical situation, the, 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 the equipment, the, nothing other than coming to our location to train and basically guide Elaine. Um, like I said, her contract, basically, what I proposed basically was, listen, moving forward, um, this was pre-existing, moving forward, um, you would basically earn what you what you get pretty much. And that's, pre that, that's pretty much it. And like I said, based on the situation that, um, Elaine was, is in right now. It's a unique situation. Um, we, are, we are very confident and comfortable. Um, you know, at this point, I, I, I now believe that maybe it happened for the best. So, no, I mean, we are very comfortable now uh, moving forward. And we are does that mean focused. You, does, does that mean you have found another camp? Does that mean you've, you've found another coach? Um, does that mean you're going to be coaching her going forward? I mean, no, what does no, I'm we definitely not going to be mean? coaching her. That's definitely not um, what the situation is. But um, we are basically, we are, I'm just making sure that um, the next situation is, is, is pretty much final and everything is smooth before we proceed. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I mean, every, like I say, everything happens for a reason. Um, 
if X didn't happen, then Y could never be possible. So it's 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 just the situation that we are in now. I think you know, I strongly believe it's a better situation. Yeah. No. It, it sounds as if you've already identified a coach or a camp or whatever the situation might be. Um, pretty much we have, like I said, we are just doing our due diligence to make sure everything is um, smoothly done. And, and, and when we start, there's no hiccups or no going back or no, no, no type of issue. It's just everything smoothly forward. Okay. So, I mean, like I said, I came on just because the, the kind of year it is, um, the opportunity that she has put herself, um, she has given herself based on the, the double double and now putting herself in a position to go for a triple double. Um, I don't see what is there that we like we wouldn't do to to make that possible and I give her a fair shot at that. Um, the situation, when you really look at it, um, if someone has your best interest, then that situation wouldn't wouldn't have came about. Yeah. So, in a sense, like it it may have happened for a reason, and I really believe in that. I I, I pray a lot about certain things, and I just believe um, in timing and. Maybe it's just the perfect timing for this situation. So question, how is Elaine doing after everything? You know, what has she been up to? What's her spirits like? Well, I mean, Elaine is is is, is upbeat. Um, like we are we we have done a lot of um investing in terms of trying to figure out what causes the, the, the injury issues and um what she should do more of or what she should do less of. Just information to present to whatever coach um, we are working with. Because at the end of the day, it is, that is really the root of, of her issues. It's real to have her stay in, in training and not be able to miss training session. You know, hard to, to miss less as less. Because, I mean, at least they, they will miss sessions. But not three months, you know, that is, that is ridiculous. So... Um, that she, she's been upbeat and she is, she is very, very positive in going forward. So, you know, that's why I just wanted to make this situation go by as quickly as possible so we can get back to, um, the, the, the road to, to and, Paris pretty much. And with the team that you have now decided to employ, who we don't know who they are as yet, do you think Elaine will be back to the best, the one that we saw breaking all those records, manifesting all these Olympic awards? Do you think she'll be there? Well, I mean, you know, sometimes, like I said, you know, when something happens, and at first you're, because I was highly disappointed about the situation. Like I, I basically was, I, 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 at the end of it, I look, I look, when I look back, I realize that I may be, I may have been forcing the situation a little bit too much. Like I said, this I was trying to get this done since September of 2022. It's all here. I can for it. It's right there. I've been trying to get that done, and it didn't happen. But now it's like you get this energy, this positive vibe about something. Like okay, um, um, we have mutual goals. Um, just conversation. You, you you found out that someone has been on the outside and. You know, basically having the same world as us here on the inside. So it's, I just think it, it, it's the best situation possible right now. Yeah, that's Darren Hero there. He's the husband of uh, the Jamaican double double Olympic sprint champion Elaine Thompson Hero, talking about the highly publicized separation between Thompson Hero and her interim coach Shaniki Osborne. That interview exclusive on Sportsmax Thursday evening was triggered by a Sportsmax.tv story uh, from Shaniki Osborne that suggested that a press release issued by Hero Thompson's Thompson Hero's management team the evening before was uh, littered with lies. So Darren Hero wanted to publicly address uh, some of the comments made by Shaniki Osborne in that Sportsmax.tv story. 
which of course was written by our track and field ace writer, Leighton Levy, who joins us after the break to talk about this story. Back in a moment. Torrential rain across the land of wood and water. Welcome back to the Sportsman Zone on this Friday. And we just aired the second portion of our exclusive interview with Darren Hira, the husband of five-time Olympic gold medalist Elaine Thompson Hira, of course, uh, um, essentially uh, giving us a complete update on what led to the separation with uh, coach Shaniki Osborne. And we are now joined by Leighton Levy, content editor at Sportsmax.tv. Leighton Levy really took the new ball on this issue, um, or should I say the starter's gun on this issue, um, because it was uh, his article published first yesterday with Shaniki Osborne that got things going. And Leighton, just right away, I want to get your initial reaction to everything that you have heard and that you are privy to. Of course, you would have had your own conversation with uh, Coach Osborne and uh, you would have heard the interview with um, Darren Hira. Um, I want to go back a little bit further than that. Um, the initial statement that came out from Elian's uh, management, yes. I thought, I think a lot of what has gone on is, has been through what I'd call, I don't know, a, a breakdown in communication. Mm -hmm. First of all, the statement from Andy Sports Management says that there has been a separation between coach, coach and athlete. I think what should have come next was we want to thank Ms. Osborne for her contribution to Lynn's improvement last year, but we've been unable to come to an agreement over compensation um, we wish her the best going forward there was I don't think there was a need to say she was asking for X and the numbers were unreasonable I think that that part of it should have remained confidential because that is what I think triggered everything going forward because then when you accuse or make an, ass an assertion that someone wanted compensation that was unwarranted then you're going to get a reaction. And so Shaniki reacted. She responded. We spoke. And then no, it, you know, it escalated into where we are now. Before you go further, Leighton, wasn't it, you think, important for Tom Sahira's management team to give at least an explanation as to why the deal broke down, given a lot of what was being said in the public space. Um, yeah, but as I said, just mentioned that the parties couldn't come to terms and come to agreement in terms of compensation. That was all you needed to say. Mm. You didn't need to go into any detail about who wanted what, and it was untenable. That is what I think. <clears throat> Look, how you communicate a particular message mm -hmm. dictates how people respond to it. And I think that part of it was necessary because here's what happens now. Then you have a conversation where both parties are stating their side and the truth is somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. If they had made that comment and saying, that statement and saying, okay, we, they, we were unable to agree on compensation and leave it at that, yeah. that gives you a reason. And then you needed to say nothing else mm -hmm. after that, regardless of, because journalists are going to get curious and going to ask why. Mm -hmm. But you didn't need to say anything else. Mm -hmm. And then it would mm -hmm. gradually go away. And once it went away, everybody moves on without any of this tension now and the, mm -hmm. the disaffection between the parties that seemingly now is at a point of disrepair because, you know, side A is saying this, side B is saying this. And both of them are, are, are beating their own drums. But there are, I'm sure that there are elements of this negotiation that we are not going to be aware of and we will never, never hear of 
that probably explains fully why the separation took place. Yeah, I want to ask you this though, Leighton, because when the Tom Sahira management team's press release had come out initially, I'm pretty certain that I'd, I'd heard from some journalistic sources that they were unable to get a response from Shanike Osborne or, mm. or Shanike Osborne was unreachable. Now, within 24 hours, you saw her and she appeared willing to say everything to you. She, she was willing, I think, based on what you just said, based on the tone of the Tom Sahira management's press release, that she wanted to spill all of her feelings, which she did in the interview with you. Yeah, well, look, when, when, when it, it makes her look like she was being unreasonable, yes. um, I think that probably hit a nerve for her, where she felt she needed to, to, um, to respond, because she felt, based on the conversations that I had with her, that she was asking for a particular number that she felt was reasonable. Because, look, and, and value that, is and what? That, and that particular number, Leighton, is, is 15%. 15%. So, so one of the things that I don't want us to do is to skirt around the issues and, and speak in generalizations. Yeah. I really want to speak to the specifics. So um, that figure that you referenced is the 15%. Mm. That's what she um, said she wanted. And, and so my question to you now is, do you think in this specific situation, the 15% request is, one, a reasonable request, and or two, an entitled request. All right, here's the thing. <clears throat> Value is what anybody is willing to pay for any particular good or service, right? Yes. Value is also what a person believes that they are worth. Yes. Right? So I'm not going to say that her request was unreasonable because if she believes that she's worth that. Who am I to argue that she's not? How far is it from what no, 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 but in I'm, the industry? No, no, but let me, but let me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to that yes. because I, I say that because I want to lay the, the foundation for what I'm about to say next. Yes. <clears throat> However, I've spoken to a number of coaches in the interim and they believe that the 15% is excessive. In fact, one coach said that is, um, I'm trying to remember his exact wording, but he, what he was saying was that you can't take 15% of anybody's money. That's the, the gist of what he was saying, right? So I understand that side of it. I also understand her side of it because regardless of what that 15% worked out to, yes. she felt she was worth that. And I'm not going to tell her that she's not. Okay, because based on what, a couple of things, based on what she was able to do in six weeks. Yes. To take a lane from a fifth place finish at the national championships when Damian Russell approached her to, and then took her to, to De Deron Hero. And then to see Elaine progress, the 9.9 .9 back stretch at the, at the World Championships. Mm -hmm. Then 11 flat, then 1092, then 1084, then 1079. Suggests mm -hmm. that she was worth the, the weight of the value of what she brought because she, you saw the improvement. Yeah. Whether or not that was going to be the value long term yeah. is something that we never know now. Yeah. So was it entitled? I, don't, I can't honestly answer that because I don't know. You're asking me to, to, to then predict the future. Yeah. So, so here's what I'll say, Leighton, because I have spoken to a number of industry experts, and I'm talking about now mostly agents yes, yeah. who help to negotiate or who negotiate many of these contracts. And what I am told is that if an athlete is with a coach and when that contract is being negotiated with that specific coach in mind because it is the work of that coach, coach. that has brought the athlete to this stage, then usually you can ask for a percentage and that may be 10%, that may be 15%. However, in instances where an athlete goes to a coach with an existing contract, contract, what is usually the case is that there is a base salary and then the coach also gets a percentage of the bonuses. Mm -hmm. so, in, in a, in, in, so you have that base salary and that is what you negotiate, which is, as far as my understanding, is what 
the attempt was to get done in this situation to negotiate a base salary um, from what I understand the hero camp was willing to pay up to about 20% on the bonuses. So the issue was really with the base, base. salary, mm -hmm. and again, which, is, which is something yeah, that, and that is comes important. Down, that, I think, comes down to inexperience. Yes. Because I, I'm not convinced that Shaniki is of the experience where she can negotiate those terms on her own, yes. and which brings in the Maya Russell into the equation, which then he, his injection into that equation from, from hearing of both sides of the conversation, mm -hmm. his injection into that equation made it an unsolvable equation. Because then the numbers that he projected, because what she said to me was that he was going to approach the Hera camp with what he estimates Elaine's contract to be valued at. Mm -hmm. Based on numbers that have come out now, those estimations were way off base, yes. which then now made that equation completely unsolvable. Yeah. I want to ask this quickly, though, because as Ricardo just mentioned, and Darren Hero said it in the exclusive interview with us, he wasn't that explicit, but it was clear that he was trying to explain that Shaniki Osborne has come to an Elaine Thompson that is already here mm -hmm. with a contract. She had nothing to do with, with her mm -hmm. worth as a financial property. Mm -hmm. So... It was unfair of her to ask to be aligned to an Elaine Thompson um, financial property that ha that she had nothing to do with building. And I mm. think Darren Hero made that point. Yeah, it's a fair but, point but as well. I, I just want to ask, though, the 15% that we have referenced a few times so far, this is 15% of what? What of, aspect of, 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 of the contract? Of her contract, of, of her contract. existing Puma contract. What, what contract? Her contract, her Puma contract. Her Puma contract, yeah. yes. Which is not her overall income, no. or what her no. overall value is no. No. as an act. I no. just no. want to make sure. Yes. I'm not sure many of our so viewers understand so, 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 that. Yes, yeah. so this is 15% this is of the base yes. of the contract. The Puma contract yes. that she has. Um, so, so understand, which is why I made the point that what was being negotiated was the base for the coach because there were bonuses yes. to be had yeah. after the base yeah. was negotiated. I, I understand that. As well. I just think that many of our viewers need to be clear as yeah. to what the 15% the 15% goes on the base of, of Right, it's of the Puma her, contract. It has nothing to do with her earnings at Diamond League and no, other that's, earnings. As far that, as, my, earnings as, far as the, constant, the constant conversation that I had, it was on, based on the contract yes. because she said that she. She said Darren told her that he couldn't pay her 15% because then that would expose the value of Elaine's contract. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which, and it, there was no other revenue stream of which she was yes, you know, yeah. negotiating access S to. Some of our viewer reactions on YouTube and, and X that we have gotten, at least a couple of them said that Sportsmax needs to talk to Shaniki Osborne yes. and her agent because they saw Darren Hira. But you, Leighton, you are Sportsmax, and you spoke with uh, Shaniki Osborne. Mm. Yeah. Do you think, having listened to Darren Hira, that he is fair in accusing, because this is what he did, he accused Shaniki Osborne of not caring about the athlete enough and caring more about the money that she would earn from coaching the athlete. You spoke with Shaniki, you heard Darren. Do you think... Those were fear comments by Darren Hira. No, I don't think because in my conversation with her, I didn't get the impression that she, this was about any level of greed or thinking about you know collecting the bag off the head of Elaine. I think she felt at the time that she, well, not the time she, that her feeling, the impression I get based on the conversation we had was that she feels that if she's going to be coaching an elite athlete of that level. And her, based on what her skill sets are, this is what she believes she was so, worth. So let me ask you this way, Leighton. Do you feel, having looked at everything, that there was a lack of understanding of how the system works on the part of Shaniki Osborne and her representative, Damia Russell, given everything that you now know? Yeah, I think so. I think, the, I think as I said before, the, experience, or the lack thereof of experience in terms of negotiating these kind of deals. Because I'm not sure 
how much of how experience that Shanique has had prior to this mm -hmm. to negotiate a deal at this level. And based on what we've seen so far, this was a direct negotiation between her and Deron Harrell. Mm -hmm. this, this didn't re involve any kind of representative, any agent who had that experience. I mean, Damai Russell, as far as, I'm, as far as I'm aware, was a compliance officer at MVP, and he was a team manager at... But, at, but she was know, the one who brought Mr. Russell into the equation yeah, because he as was, her representative. Yeah, yeah, because he was the one who brought her into the equation by introducing her to to Darren and saying that yeah. you know maybe she could be a better coach in terms of getting to move forward, to move forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, when there are loggerheads, mm -hmm. because of the frustration that clearly she was feeling at the time, she brought him in hoping that he would, would have been able yeah. to find some level of yeah. agreement between both sides. You but, just said that you don't think Shanike Osborne mm -hmm. is qualified to negotiate a contract at this level based on her experience yeah. or lack of. Do you think Damia Russell, who she invited into the picture, is qualified? Since you're saying that you don't think she Based is. Based on what we know now, I don't think so either. Wow. But I think she, she felt like he was capable, given the fact, of, the fact that he was working with MVP prior, mm -hmm. given the fact that he was a team manager at, at um, the UTEC, yeah. and, of course, now the assistant coach at the University yeah. of New Mexico Highlands, mm -hmm. he probably would have had that kind of experience where he would have understood yeah. the dynamics of how these contracts yeah. work. And because she didn't have that experience, she relied on him to be able to then move the deal yeah. forward. But, but Ricardo and, and Leighton, do you think that, having been associated with MVP in the past, Damia Russell, that Darren Hero may have been aware of him before because he accused him in our exclusive interview of knowing nothing about track and field. Based on his interaction with him, Darren Hero said in the exclusive interview with Sportsmax that this is a man that doesn't know how, how track and field works. Well, I'll, I'll, answer the, I'll answer it this way, Lance. Yes. And so when I spoke with Darren Hero for the first time and I first heard about Damia Russell being part of the equation, he could not even remember his full name, which suggested to me this was not someone that he, he knew a lot about before mm -hmm. um, these conversations mm -hmm. and before this negotiation started. So um, I will answer it that way. That's as yeah, best as I can answer it. <clears throat> because when I, when I was trying to find out who he was, because when she said she brought him in to be able to then help to you know, bring about a, an amicable agreement here. I thought he was someone who probably had that experience, but all, all the information that I managed to find about him mm -hmm. was that, that he had at UTEC and uh, New Mexico. There was nothing to suggest that he was trained in any way to negotiate these kind of deals. Mm -hmm. And what she explained to me was that he said he was going to send there on an estimate of what he believed Elian's, the value of Elian's contract was about, which, you know, again, shows yeah. that he, I mean, based on what the interview revealed with yeah. Darren, was that showed that he was way off base. So therefore, any numbers that he would have come with yes. were not going to be logically plugged into that equation. Yeah. It, it, Lance asked you the question, Leighton, earlier about whether you thought Shaniki Osborne was being unreasonable in her requests, having listened to Darren Hira, do you believe that he was unreasonable in his approach based on what you heard from him? Well, okay, here's the thing. Here's where the, the divergence takes place. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he argued about putting, putting things on the table in terms of that deal with add-ons, with add you know, bonuses, etc., she didn't. I didn't hear that from her, mm -hmm. so I can't honestly say, you know, what that circumstance was. But what she said to me was that when she made her, she put what she wanted on the table, mm -hmm. and when they came back with the new figure from Mr. Russell, mm -hmm. was that he said that they were trying to extort him or extort Elaine which means that he didn't think the numbers were logical. And based on what he said, yes. obviously, clearly, the numbers were, were ridiculous. Huh? Yeah. One of the things I want to say, um, Lance and Leighton, because I understand, based on what has happened in the past, 
and based on the public rhetoric that there seems to be a lack of trust in the Hira camp. And so from that standpoint, when I was investigating this story, one of the things I ensured was that whatever was going to be said in that interview yesterday, there was evidence to support. Mm -hmm. I say that to say that I can speak confidently that what was said as it relates to how the negotiations unfolded was factual. Mm -hmm. So I have no issues from that standpoint or concerns about whether these are actually the facts. Now, how we interpret and analyze those facts becomes a completely different issue. But in terms of the, f the facts of, the, of, of what was brought out, I have no concerns about that. And, and you had the advantage of having seen those conversations. Yes. But as I mentioned before, you know, when I spoke to Shaniki, I, you know, we were on the phone, we did what Lance just asked me about mm -hmm. the details of what that negotiation was from her side. Mm -hmm. I didn't get, I didn't get that information because then <clears throat> she she was giving me what the, the conversation between her and Darren were, yes. not anything that had to do with Demi, Demi Russell's um, yes. discussions with him. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have I didn't and, have access to that yeah, information. And having read everything, having read your story, Layton, and having listened to. Darren Hira on Thursday and earlier today. This is how I surmise it. Shaniki Osborne felt that she deserved 15% of Elaine's contract as her coach. Elaine Thompson Hira and Darren Hira felt that because she was coming into an existing situation, and because they were providing the training facilities, the equipment, everything that was necessary for Elaine Thompson Hira to have success, and all the coach was coming with was her expertise and her whistle, um, then there was to ask for 15% was unreasonable. And so what they wanted was a figure. Now, I've heard a $40,000 figure banded about as to what was offered. Um, I understand that was an initial offer which was rejected by Shaniki Osborne. And that's when the request came to provide a number. a number that would be satisfactory for you to coach Elaine Thompson era. And it was having requested that figure that the numbers that Darren era spoke to us about yesterday, close to a million US nice dollars, nice which is a base figure plus bonuses in that close to one yeah, million not, US dollars. So it's not the, so, so that having listened to everything, I am pretty clear in my mind that that is how this negotiation unfolded. And once that final figure came, as Darren Ira pointed out, it was felt we could not go forward Yeah, but and that figure, and that figure, as he said, was ridiculous because <laughs> look, for you to get, if you are assuming that 15% of Elian's contract is 750,000 US dollars, mm -hmm. that would assume that Elian would probably be the highest paid track and field athlete in the world. And rivaling some top athletes in other sports. In other sports as well. And I don't think that's the case. Um, you know, so those numbers are way off base. Yeah. And I think, as I said before, Plugging in those numbers to that equation made it an unsolvable equation. Yeah. We're, we're fast out of time. Where do you think she should go next? I don't know. Um, where can she go? Um, she can't go to elite for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Francis says she, she's not welcome back at MVP. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think, given where she is aligned to in terms of shoe sponsors, um, yeah. Sprint Tech is not an option. Mm -hmm. Darren says it's not going to be him. Um, so, yeah. But it has to be somebody. Yeah. Uh, it, I, and, and one, he, plausible, and he, one plausible coach could be probably be Michael Frito. Mm. Um, but I don't know. 
you know, mm. Akil Smith is not a 100 meter, 200 meter guy. You mean Akil Stewart? Stewart, sorry, yeah. I said Smith. <laughs> Stewart, yeah. Mm. I um, mean, he has coached quality sprinters before, not at the level not of the that layer, level, of course, yeah. yes. Mm. So, I don't know. You know, I, I'm actually eager to find out where she's going to end up because mm. the coach that she goes to mm. has to be someone with a significant experience who's going to be able to, to bring her along given the, the space of yeah, time well, that they have to work yeah, well, with. Well, well, having said that, do you trust Darren Hira's posture in the interview with us, that he is comfortable and feels energized and is confident about the immediate future? Because given what has happened here, um, he, he, he may feel, as Elaine's husband, and this is such a public story, that he wants to put a positive spin on the story. He wants to um, advertise a posture of things being okay. So do you think that he is genuinely feeling that they're in a good place and they're they are okay? Or he's just saying that because it just feels positive to go that route? I'm hoping he makes the right decision in terms of who to select to, to be the next coach. Because as he said, Elaine is approaching a territory that no other female athlete has ever done before. That's right. Three-time Olympic world champ I mean, Olympic champion in the sprint double. Yeah. That's never well, been she's done. she's already done what no one else yeah, has I done. I mean, she's already, woman, she's in, yes, already so she's in the pantheon of one. Yes, yes. Okay? That's, she's because she's the only person that's ever done it. Yeah. So to take this photo and make her not only a legend, she'd be an icon in the sport, yeah. right? And she'd probably go down, not probably, but she definitely would be considered the greatest of all time. Yeah. Right, so this is a very, very important window of opportunity for them to find the right coach and the right, the right environment for her to thrive over the next nine months before she goes into Paris. So I'm hoping that whatever decision they make to find a new coach, that will be the right one because there is no, there is no second chance at this. You have one shot. It's not like Elaine is 22 or 23 years old. She's 31. So this is not... This is the next for the next Olympic cycle. She's going to be 35. Yes. There's no guarantee she's going to be the Elaine Thompson that we know now at 35. So this is a, this is a hit or miss situation. If you miss, there's no second chance at it. So I'm hoping, with fingers and toes crossed, mm -hmm. that this is this decision that they make, whoever they decide to go with, is the right one. Yeah, well, all the sports journalists across Jamaica and maybe even the Caribbean probably scampering now trying to figure out where Elaine Thompson era goes next. I suspect we'll find out soon. That's it for this segment of the Sportsmax Zone. <laughs>